So now we can use this equation here to calculate delta P. If the fitness of each allele doesn't change, then we can calculate delta P, so if it doesn't change over time. And delta P is just going to be the change in the frequency of allele A1. And so it's just going to equal the P at time equals 1 minus the starting P, so minus the starting allele frequency. So if we plug in that equation that we just came up with into here, what we end up getting is P squared times the fitness of our big A, or A1, A1 individuals plus, oops, sorry, uh, yeah, so we're, we're going to uh, divide by average fitness at the end, plus PQ times the fitness of our A1, A2 individuals. Got a little cramped at the end there. Minus P. Okay, so we still have that P at the end. So that's just plugging in this P T equals 1 equation into here. And all I was doing was adding in the numerators together since we have the same, I'm sorry, the denominators. We have the same denominator for both of our terms. So if we want to make this even fancier, what we can do is we can change this P here and um, add in our old equation for P. So then this is going to equal to P squared omega 1 1 plus PQ omega 1 2 all divided by average omega minus, now we're going to change this P term into our, into our older P term. And so in this case, that's going to be P squared. And now we're going to just add in this term here times the average uh, fitness. That's just so we can get the same denominator everywhere. So our P is going to be P squared plus PQ. So now you have P squared times average fitness plus PQ times average fitness, all divided by average fitness. And if you're still curious about where this came from, that's just because we already know that P equals P squared plus PQ, and now we're just going to be multiplying the top and the bottom by the same term, which is going to be the average, um, the average fitness for the population. Okay. So we're going to be multiplying it by 1. Okay, and we get this term here. Okay, so far so good. So let's, whoops, let's try erasing all of this. Oh, there it goes. I'm going to get back to my pen. There we go. Okay. So let's keep moving on here. Oh, I lost a little bit of stuff. There we go. Okay, so now that we've got everything with the same denominator, we can simplify stuff a little bit. Omega 1, 1 plus PQ, omega 1, 2. We're going to put the whole thing with average omega at the bottom. So minus P squared average omega plus PQ average omega. Okay, so now we've got some common terms here that we can divide out, and we're going to divide out this P over average omega. So when we take P and average omega out, so that's this average omega here, and we're going to take P out of each of these terms, so I'll put little dots above all the P's. So here's one, two, three, and four. So we're going to pull all of those out of our equation now. And so we end up getting just regular P times omega 1, 1 plus Q, because we got rid of that P, times omega 1, 2 minus just regular P, because we got rid of one of the P's, times average fitness plus Q 
times average fitness. Okay. So we can also do one more kind of simplification. We can um, simplify it this way. So here we've still got our P over omega. And now we're going to do one more step of our simplification, which is that we're going to combine our P and Q terms. So here we've got a P here and a P here. Oops, let's get a good color. And here we've got a Q here and a Q here. So we're just going to stick them next to each other. And uh, this is going to give us P times the fitness for 1, 1 minus the average fitness. So those are coming from here and here. So there's that minus sign that's coming in there. And this is going to be plus, and we're going to take out those gray Q's. So Q times omega 1, 2 plus average omega. Oops, sorry, this is supposed to be a minus here because this whole term is minus. Uh, I lost a minus. Okay. There we go. That's better. Okay, I fixed all of it. <laughs> so this is going to be our new equation here. This equation is actually pretty much the average excess of fitness equation right here. So the average excess of fitness equation is looking at what's in those brackets. So we're going to say that, oh, oh no, <laughs> they do. there we go, A of A1 equals the average excess of fitness for allele A1. So we're going to set that equal to that bracketed term. So that's just going to be equal to P times omega 1, 1 minus average omega for the population plus Q times omega 1, 2 minus the average omega for the population. This is just this bracketed term right here. And all that's going to do is that's going to allow us to set delta P as something a lot nicer looking. So that's going to allow us to set delta P to P over average fitness for the population times the average excess of fitness for allele A1. And this is this complicated term that's in there. So let's break this complicated term down really quickly. So this complicated term isn't so bad. We've got this P, and that's just going to be the frequency of the A1 alleles from A1, A1 individuals. So the frequency of these A1 alleles from a1, A1 individuals, and this term here is just going to be our, the fitness of our A1, A1 individuals minus the mean, the mean fitness. And it's going to be similar here. Here we've got our fitness of our A1, A2 individuals minus the mean fitness. And this Q term here, this is going to represent the frequency of our A2 individuals, sorry, the frequency of our A1 alleles from our A1, A2 individuals. Okay. And that's our average excess of fitness equation.